Hey everyone, I am Lufa, and today we're going to be talking about Jinxy. I think it would be an understatement to say that content creators are important for video games. The trend of games, depending on creators to stay relevant, has been going on since YouTube was invented. From Let's Plays launching Minecraft to success, to Ninja being the face of Fortnite, there is no such thing as a viral game without its pioneers. And sometimes a single video can guarantee a long time success. Because of this, studios will frequently sponsor creators to play their games, hoping that by association, the game might be bought on release. But what happens when a game has already been around for a while and its players have only become more jaded with time? Can a content creator still be enough? The answer is yes, as long as your creator is Jinxie. Bob Jinxie is back. You can call me Pulse. Guardiax, answer deployed. Boop. Boop. <laughs> no! Rainbow Six Siege is known for being one of the most innovative and tactical games inside of the FPS genre. It is one of the only FPS games on the market that is asymmetrical, uses cameras, and has gameplay that feels fresh. Well, at least it did feel fresh for the first couple of years. Back then, there were only a couple dozen operators, but it was more than enough for people to play the game for months without getting bored. While Rainbow's 2015 release was criticized for its initial lack of content and heavy microtransactions, it was overall a more than successful launch especially by today's standards. While the game didn't have as much content as it does today, it was new and especially unique, featuring gameplay that had never been seen before its debut. The variety of operators combined with the game's immersive gunplay meant that the last thing you would hear from someone playing it at the time was that it was stale. Fast forward to today though, and that is now the most common complaint. However, it's not necessarily in the way that you would think. Now, when players call Modern Siege stale, a lot of that does come from playing the game for years. Though alternative game modes and loads of operators have been added, the game can still be repetitive. Once novel gameplay features like droning in are no longer as exciting as they used to be, and many players would much rather use their real phones. But if you ask most players why they were tired of Siege, the gameplay loop would actually probably be at the bottom of the list of their complaints. Because the problems of Siege are much less fundamental than its gameplay. Hackers have been a common problem over the game's recent years, ruining gameplay with everything you'd expect from aimbot to teleportation. You might think that that seems normal for an FPS, but you would be underestimating Rainbow cheaters. You see, these hackers aren't just your typical nuisances. They take things a step further, using cartoonishly annoying hacks, like forcing players to have their monitors covered by a chicken. While this hack is pretty funny and ironically refreshing to its targets, that only goes further to show how tired players have become with the game. Even the hackers are having to get creative to keep things interesting. Bugs are similarly despised, with a recent article from PC Gamer talking about having to warn newcomers about how difficult the game can often be to start. But even worse is the experience for veterans who can't even manage to send invites without something going wrong. Even the battle pass, which you think Ubisoft would protect with their life, has been buggy with players unable to get it to work right, failing to properly let them progress it, a first in the world of greedy video game companies. These issues, combined with the game's age and long-running formulas, have made for an experience that many players find themselves dreading, with these persistent issues outlasting many of their own motivation to play. And if things were to go unchanged, it wouldn't have been long until the game would be considered dead. But despite all odds, the game found a resurgence through a streamer known as Jinxie. Having streamed it for five years, Jinxie, also known as Junko, has become very familiar with the inner workings of Rainbow Six Siege. His knowledge of the game has made him an excellent player, being able to give advice and well-versed thoughts on the game. But if it was just skill that Jinxie had, he wouldn't have made nearly as many viral clips as he has. This is because Jinxie is an incredibly witty streamer, and watching him is enough to entertain even the shortest of attention spans. His biggest strength being the sheer quantity of these moments he creates. You see, while the average streamer might have the occasional funny take or reaction, these moments are typically rare and isolated in their community. Most streamers are known for a dozen if not a few hilarious clips that actually go into the mainstream. This is understandable as streaming for hundreds of hours a month can make it difficult to be clever 24-7, but not for Jinxie. You see, Jinxie is a clip machine, constantly firing off unexpected and entertaining moments throughout his streams, so much so that compilations have been made of clips that made him famous. Right now, these clips are everywhere, with Jinxie's hilarious commentary and quick reactions creating dozens of classics, like when he started giving callouts to a gameplay trailer or freaked out when he saw someone trying to steal
sneak a plant. His long running hunt for Jaeger's black ice is notorious in its own right. I remember seeing this clip months ago and instantly getting why people liked it. These clips went viral because they were universal. You didn't need to play Siege to get the jokes and that was really one of their biggest strengths. But like any good streamer, Jinxie didn't even need Siege to be entertaining. That's because he could be funny without the game. In fact, several of his most popular clips were taken from the Xbox party menu, just talking with viewers and other characters in Xbox party calls. Jinxie's ability to do this made for an endless amount of clips from gameplay and voice chats alike, which have spread across the internet, all of which gradually led to Jinxie going global. Now, when I say global, I mean number one, because it was this summer that Jinxie took off and became not only the number one most subscribed to Seed streamer, no, 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 he's the number one most subscribed to Twitch streamer in general, having more than giants like Hassan and Kai Senate. Now, while it might look like overnight success due to Jinxie's sudden rise over the last three months, it is anything but that, as Jinxie did in fact stream for five years to a much lower metric. Like with many other successful streamers, Jinxie had to put in the work for a while before getting to the top, streaming for countless hours without the knowledge that he would ever make it this far. Jinxie has talked about this on stream and his story is actually pretty motivational. Even though it might seem ridiculous now, when Jinxie started, there was nothing but people telling him that he wouldn't make it and that it was a waste of time. I've been streaming five years, bro. Five fucking years. I started streaming when I was 17 years old, bro. Bro, I started streaming when I was 17 years old. I'm about to turn 22 in like a month, two months. Bro, bro, when I first started streaming, bro, you gotta understand the amount of motherfuckers that said it's a waste of fucking time. I'll never be able to do it. It's not a real fucking job. The amount of motherfuckers that never believed in me, bro. <laughs> But God did. <laughs> the amount of motherfuckers that will tell you that you can't do something because they can't imagine themselves doing something. Bro, do not let anyone tell you shit, bro. Do not let anyone tell But it's a good thing that Jinxie didn't give up because of his rise, Siege rose too. The interesting part though is that what Jinxie did to Siege had never actually really been done before. Take Ninja, for example. Though he was a prominent figure during Fortnite's rise, you can't really say the game wouldn't have succeeded without him. Sure, while he was the number one personality at the time, breaking records and streaming with the likes of Drake, he was still riding on the wave of Fortnite's success. I'm not saying he didn't elevate it, but the momentum was already there and was going to continue to rise whether Ninja decided to stream the game or not. The difference with Jinxie though, is that there was no wave to ride on. Outside of its initial debut, Siege had never even gotten close to Fortnite's height of popularity, and especially so over the last two years, where in many people's eyes the game had gotten exceptionally stale. But clip after clip, Jinxie started to build his own wave of of momentum that had not existed before him. Additionally, the term single-handedly is not an exaggeration when it comes to Jinxie because he literally did it on his own. While many other games have profited from multiple creators collaborating and working together to boost their clout, Jinxie is the only streamer who caused this resurgence because the resurgence is about him. He is the reason people are going back to Siege. Thousands of players are saying that they are picking up the game for the first time in months, if not years, because of the impact that Jinxie has had on them. Many say that his streams are the only reason, with some amazed at how he can make their most hated game look fun. The crazy part is that all those issues I mentioned earlier are just as much of a problem. It's not like Ubisoft saw people were rallying around a streamer and decided to fix the game. No, those issues are very much still rampant. But the power of Jinxie's influence has caused many people to ignore the issues just because of how exciting he makes the game look. I think a lot of people underestimate just how powerful clips can be. Every time someone sees a clip of Jinxie's, there's a good chance he he's going to be playing Siege. Even if someone follows him for a different game, they're still going to see gameplay of Siege on their feed because it's his main game. And the more gameplay from a game you see, the more you'll probably want to play it, naturally wanting to give it another go after seeing how much fun someone can have with it. This simple but powerful cause and effect has led many to give Jinxie the sole credit for reviving Siege, and it's honestly completely deserved. Having your personality and skills be enough to not only get people to rally around a game, but also reach the highest amount of subscribers on Twitch is incredible. And now many people want to see Jinxie get his own skin and maybe even Operator because of what he was able to do for the game's community. Whether you like Siege or not, this is a very cool story to see play out. Jinxie grinded with little to no support for his dream and is now getting a chance to stream IRL with some of the biggest personalities on Twitch. It shows that you don't need a huge amount of resources or connections to make it. With Jinxie, his personality and passion for his game were enough. I bet there are plenty of gaming communities that wish they had someone like Jinxie to revive their game. But as a Siege player myself, I'm glad he chose this one. It would be a shame to see what would have happened otherwise.
the game would probably just decay for like another year and then die. But what do you guys think? Have you been following Jinxie for a while? What's your favorite clip of him? If you like this video, please consider hitting subscribe. It's my dream to get my very own YouTube play button. And I swear that the second I get to 99k, they're going to stop printing those things. Just watch. They're going to discontinue them the second I get there. But either way, I hope you have a great day and thanks for watching. I'm Lufa. Cardiac sensor deployed.